folks, I'm back with another one. I hope you're well, I hope you and your family are doing good, and I hope you're having a great time, whatever you're up to this summer. Um, in this one, folks, I do want to touch on a, a subject that I have thought about for quite a while, and I've, again, experienced this in, in people that I've come across and, and spoke to, um, and I've, I've also seen it as a, a danger to someone's um if you like ability to be able to stop um whatever they're struggling with addiction wise so yeah the fear of being judged now to me there's multiple aspects of that so the fear of being judged as i touched on in the peer pressure video it could be that you're struggling with drink but you're going out you know with friends who like to have a drink and you don't want to tell them that you you know you're struggling with drink i'm just using drink as an example it could be any um addiction really um drink drugs gambling sex whatever um but we'll use drink as an example it, it could be that they like a drink and you you don't want to tell them that you're struggling with it so you go and do it anyway um with them so that's having a detrimental impact on your ability to to stop and it's allowing the addiction to firm uh, a further grip around you um, and the reason you you may not want to tell your friends or your your social group that you're struggling with drink as an example is because in some cases the fear of what they will think the fear of being judged the fear that they will think you you know, stupid, they will think that you're not one of them anymore, You'll that they'll think this, they'll think that, and before you know it, you've built up a great big picture of what they will think, and so it's easier then just to go along with it and do it. That's one aspect of, of um, allowing what people will think and allowing being judged and the fear of it to to impact your ability to get help and maybe have a break or maybe stop whatever addiction you're struggling with. The other aspect in my mind is that when it actually comes to the point where you want to get help and you want to speak out, um, be it in a meeting, you know, we all know there's AA, um, NA, GA, there's other services out there, um, much help out there really for people who are struggling with addiction. But when it actually comes to reaching out and, and speaking, be it just to uh, a service where you phone up to maybe get counselling, maybe get um, sort of a meeting group um, organised, I think and I've seen this so often in a meeting, when someone comes into a meeting room, um, you know, whatever, I'll use it, GA in this room, in, in this example, there is a fear I've seen often that people will come in and because they don't want to be judged by the room, because they don't want the room to think bad of them, because they don't want, um, you know, the counsellor to think this person's, you know, a joke, basically. They won't be honest with them. And they may be honest to an extent, but they will hold things back. And the holding of things back comes from a fear of what the other person or the other people in the room will think of you. And to me, the things that you're holding back usually are the stuff that really need to be worked on really need to be out there and really need to be spoken about and the thing with it is that you know i understand that it's not easy to come from a place where in your life things may have been going well you may have been you know doing really well you're proud of yourself you know you're happy um your family think good of you your family think you're doing great, your friends think you're doing great. And then to find yourself in a room 
with other addicts, with you sat in a room with a counsellor. And for you to accept you've got to that stage where you need that sort of help is hard enough. But then to open up and eventually open up to friends and family that you're struggling can be even harder. And I understand that. But the whole point in, you know, in my mind anyway, in getting help, in reaching out for, for some help, the whole point in that is to get better. It's not to get worse. By enabling yourself to look past the fear of being judged, look past the fear of what people will think, you, you really are taking another step towards getting better because you're allowing yourself to speak about stuff that really needs to be spoke about. No matter how bad it is, no matter um, how deep it is, and no matter really what, what people think, because holding that back is almost like, in my mind, um, leaving a little door open to, to your former, you know, your former ways, if you like. The whole process of getting out, be it counselling, be it on the phone, be it in a support group, in a meeting, the whole point in that, as I say, is to get better and to lay everything out on the table, even if it's not in the first session, I urge you to do it eventually, you know, within two or three, maybe four sessions, really get everything out there. Um, and then once it's laid out, you can then start to build. They can, you know, whoever's helping you, be it a meeting, a support group, especially a counselor, can then start to work on those things. You know, by holding things back, it may prevent progress being made. And it's just not worth it. For what? For what? You know, I dare, I dare not say this because she will, or you will, they will think this of me. But why? For what? What does, their, what, does what they think matter? Because what matters in this situation is you and your ability to recover and live again a normal and happy life. Whatever normal and happy is to you. Certainly if you're in a meeting room, certainly if you're in front of a counsellor, you're struggling a bit. And in order to get better, in order to return to that life where you enjoyed things, where you was happy, where you was proud, and where you could function normally, the need to be honest, the need to get everything out there without being scared of what people think is paramount in my opinion. And again, I wanted to touch on that because I have seen it. I have seen, you know, situations where people will come into a meeting, they won't be quite honest. And then eventually, because they've not been honest and then they've not worked on things, they start to not turn up at meetings anymore. Before you know it, you see them in six months, 12 months, two years, even worse than they was before. And then, only then, they may start to open up, despite what people may think of them. The other side of all this is that when you do open up, particularly in a meeting, you know, Gamblers Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, whatever meeting group you're going to, you'll find that in those meetings especially, a lot of people, they're all there for the same reason, to stop um, or to get help. And you'll find that whatever you're holding back, people may have done worse than that. People may have thought worse than that. They may be able to relate with you. They may not have thought as bad as you. They may not have done as bad as you. But whatever, they are there for a reason. They've all got skeletons in the cupboard, but they're in a place where they can talk about them openly. Um, in front of a counsellor, you can talk about them openly. The fear of what people think shouldn't prevent you from working on yourself because you matter. You and your family matter. Getting past the fear isn't just for you. you know, it's for your family, it's for your friends. It's to enable you to be happy again. 
and work on yourself, work on the things that, you know, put you in that situation. Um, please, if you, if you are scared of speaking out, of getting help, of being honest with people because of what they may think, you will find, trust me in this, I'm not saying it's the same for absolutely everyone, but you will find that unexpectedly to you, there does come a lot of support. For every one person who may think something bad, you know, something negative, you'll find three, four, five, six people who are really, really supportive um, and therefore help you be in a social circle when they are, you know, going to have a bet. They may think twice about that when you're in that circle or they may, um, if they do go for a bet, one of them makes, you know, go somewhere else with you, go to another place with you, just so you don't feel as though, you know, you've got to have a bet to fit in or you've got to have a drink to fit in. It's another barrier, another barrier to break the cycle of addiction. And that's what I'm big on, as you know, I've spoke about it in many other videos. But yeah, please don't let the fear of what other people think of you stop you getting your life back and getting back in, into some sort of place where you're happy and you're proud and, you know, you can move forward with your life. Because ultimately, what you have in your mind, they think this of me, they think that of me. It's just not important. What is important is you and your you know, if you've got family, you and your family's happiness, not what they think. Opinions will come and go in every aspect of life. What they think of you, it really, really isn't important. What is important is you and your recovery. I wish you all the best. If you can relate, leave me a comment in the video. You know, reach out. My, my Twitter's in the description below. I'm happy to have a chat on this subject or any other subject. Um, if you feel this video um, is something that you can relate to and you've found benefit from it, consider leaving a like on the video. Um, and yeah, I, I, I wish you all the best. I do hope, I know I do emphasise um, certain things in this video a little bit, you know, a lot, but I, I really do it out of care. And I have seen this situation have a detrimental impact on people um, quite often. So it's, it's something I wanted to put out there and uh, yeah, I hope you can benefit from it. I wish you all the best and uh, I'll catch you on the next one folks.